As I've mentioned before, the film that inspired me to become a film composer was Queen's score for Flash Gordon. Good score, bad film. The thing that really made me want to get into film music was Vangelis' score for Ridley Scott's Blade Runner. Great score, great film. In fact, the score wasn't available on record or CD until relatively recently. Allegedly, Ridley Scott didn't like it that much. Mental. A few years ago, 2004, I did my first studio picture. It was a Mandy Moore film and I needed an orchestrator. I was introduced to a chap called Ben Valfish and he went on to do great things, including Blade Runner 2 with Hans Zimmer. I was seething with jealousy, as I think the whole of the composing fraternity were. Don't worry, Ben, I'm over it now. So, if you were to make a Blade Runner score, how would you go about doing it? Well, first, you need one of these. But you'll see, even if I just put this on Google, you can't find them anywhere because they're one of the most coveted vintage synths of all time. Absolutely enormous, 200 pounds, not in cost, but weight. And if there was a listing here, like there was a couple of weeks ago, it's likely that it will be for over a hundred thousand dollars. I got to play one once at Daniel Pemberton's place. That's very nice. And I know that he was very nervous about how much he'd paid, but it was a fraction of what they go for now. So it was a sound investment. So alternatively, when you go to CS80, you've got the smaller models like the CS50, but there's this thing here called the Deckard's Dream. And if you're a fan of Blade Runner, you'll know Deckard is the Blade Runner, the person who goes and nicks androids. It's made by Black Corporation, who are based, I believe, in Japan, and it's an homage to the CS80. So what makes the CS80 popular is its imperfection. It's not fat, doesn't sound like, like a moog in its fatness, but it just sounds very epic and cinematic. And that's because the tuning is all over the place. And it's amazing that Black Corporation have adopted the spirit of imperfection in their homage to the CS80. So I'm going to take you through this and see if I can do a little homage to Vangelis. You'll see there's two oscillators, but it's eight note polyphonics. So effectively that's 16 oscillators. They've also got these sine waves in here. So I don't know if that is considered to be a secondary oscillator. What I'm going to do is first go from the presets to panel, so I'm now, whatever is showing here is going to be the sound that we have. I'm gonna turn mix up here. So we're just listening to this oscillator here and I'll just work my way through it. So we've got our pulse width modulation here. So we've got square wave here or sawtooth here, or both. It's got two filters for each oscillator independent of each other, so a low high pass filter. We've got the res up full there. You'll see that it's very much a curated synth in the sense that, that a lot of these don't have a massive effect. So it doesn't take you too far away from the legacy of the Yamaha. LPF. Initial level. Very subtle that. And this is the attack level. We've got our ADR for the amount of filter and how it kind of comes in, how it decays. And it's released. So you can hear the filter closing. We've then got the VCF level. And also this sine wave here. It's 
got a little bit of fat, but it's not your Moog full level stuff. <laughs> And then your amplifier section. So attack decay, sustain release, so got off. And short. It instantly sounds very much like Stranger Things because I think that what makes that score very authentic is the tuning irregularities, which is often not replicated by your virtual instrument versions. We'll come back to that in a sec. Now these I won't be able to demonstrate because I believe these are aftertouch and this keyboard either doesn't have it or I don't know how to make it work. So this is a duplicate of this and you can move between the two oscillators here. And just focusing in on the tuning. You'll hear it just really isn't kind of just, it's, it's very irregular. Okay, so let's mix these two together. You can adjust the register here. Safe to say that I'll probably always leave it in that position. Then we've got coarse tune, which is universal, fine tune. And then we've got detuning between the two oscillators. This says sub oscillator, and I think basically it's a, a low voltage oscillator, but the speed of it and what it's affecting. So almost frequency modulation speed, but not quite. The mix I mentioned before, and then we've got these general brilliance and resonance settings here. It sounds kind of like another filter, that. I'm not quite sure what that is, but it sounds really good. And then we've got touch response again, which I won't be able to demonstrate. And this is basically key tracking, so you can adjust the amount of brilliance depending on the pitch of the notes you're playing. See so what I mean about the tuning. We've got portamento settings. Speed that and then glissando. So it's a quantized portamento. And then we've got a general uh, sustain setting. Back panel, very simple. We've got some basic MIDI ins, outs, and throughs, but I'm using it in USB mode. So we simply got this coming up in Logic here. It's a monosynth, so it's just a single TRS out. And for those of you who are familiar with Vangelis' scores, it's very much about the effects that he applies to these wondrous synths. We've got, if we switch it to factory, I get the feeling there's lots of in-jokes here, but up is down and down is up. So when you hit shift, you can move up and down your banks. You can go to factory settings, some interesting settings there. When you take your finger off shift, you can see it's previous, next, save, load. Phone jack on the front here. Build quality is good, and it also comes with rack ears if you want to load it into your rack. But what I love about outboard synths is the tactile nature of them, so it's good to have them close. So that's the Deckard's dream homage to the CS80. But listening to Vangelis' work, the sounds, the root source sounds, is only half of what Vangelis was about. And I think that's what's really interesting about Vangelis because he was much a sonic explorer, a fantastic user of reverbs and delays as he was a composer. So it's time to get the jug of splosh out. So we've got our MIDI channel here. 
we've got a track input here. Mono to stereo. Stereo delay, so that will instantly give us our kind of stereo-ness. And I'm going to go really big. So let's add another track. Now, this doesn't work. It's such a complicated keyboard, ridiculous. So what I'm going to do is just going to program in some pitch bend stuff. So I'm just going to get some synth sounds up and just build up this mega drone that he tends to use. Really absolutely massive. I'm going to do that with Albion 1. Make it all synthy, bit of the old delays, and maybe some chorus. And we need a splang. Van get it's used like a it's like a koto or something. I don't have one of those, so I'm just gonna make this sound a bit more janky. So I'm just gonna get ye oldie favourite up. If we just track a piano with that. Just two more things to put in, some bells. I found this trick the other day, which is way cool. And it's the crotale, is it crotales or cro... I don't know. Down into Wonderland. again. Whenever I do these demonstrations composing from scratch, I mean, we've been going for 44 minutes now. Something like this, I would spend day, maybe two days on really sculpting. So you've very much got a kind of poor man's Blade Runner. But a demonstration of the Deckard's Dream that I love, it was my brother, Joe, who told me about it. And my brother's a massive Blade Runner fan. So Deckard's Dream and a bit of Spitfire and lots of tuning down into the depths of different octaves and stuff like that. Let's run it down. As always, for watching to the end, if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. And I'd really like to hear from you about what you use to create your futuristic dystopian soundscapes. One of those for the Black Corporation. Do subscribe if you haven't done already. There's some really fun stuff coming up. And ding that bell if you want to be notified the next time I put a film up. See you next time. <laughs>